box right here is the dampener and it's got this little arm that comes out and connects into the tail wheel here. Oh, it's just that simple. So is it uh, hydraulic or it's just rubber dampening? It's or? hydraulic, yeah. Huh. Wow. Works, works beautifully. Sometimes like when the first tail first comes down, you can feel like it's, it's good got that first, that. like it's going to go shimmy and then it, it's, it's done. And most of the time I don't feel anything. And then where do you get that from? That's Alaska Bush Alaska Bush Do you get it through, uh, you buy it directly from them? Or? That's, that's what I do. Yeah. Hey. Come on up in front of the airplane and we'll show you what we hook up. The old school way of doing things before they had dynamic balancing equipment is the prop shop would do a static balance on your engine. On your prop, when they got it out of the prop shop, they overhauled it. When you put it back on the airplane, that doesn't necessarily allow for any imbalance in any engine internal parts. If you take an engine and you balance the crankshaft, you balance the rods, you balance the pistons all down to the gram, you static balance the propeller, you put it back on and run it up, requires very, very, very little weight. I mean, we're talking 13, 15 grams, like a half ounce. This has got a little bit of imbalance. Matt started doing it last year. Um, we're going to finish it up and put the permanent weights on, do the logbook entries and everything for it. What we do inside within six inches of the output of the crankshaft there's an accelerometer that mounts on the crankcase in a vertical axis so that measures the amount of out of balance transmits it back to the computer on the other side we've got a photo cell and it's shooting forward and i've got a piece of reflective tape on the back of one of the prop blades so that's our master blade so it takes and it calculates where the heavy spot was with the clock angle and it'll tell me where the heavy spot in that rotating mass is. And by the amount of imbalance it's got, generally on these little airplanes that we deal with, one AN970 washer is about 0.1 ips, inches per second, which is how we measure the amplitude velocity. Your target goal is to get it down below a 0.2. If you can get it down below a 0.1, it's like really smooth. If you can get it down below a 0.05, it's like electric motor smooth. Um, my airplane, the brown one, I mess around with it. I get a little over the top. I'll leave this on it and go fly the airplane and set it in flight and cruise and get the RPM down. The azimuth angle changes a little bit, but not that much. I've yet to do, I've been doing this for 45 years. Started out with the first generation equipment with the strobe light and an analog gauge. I've yet to have anybody that could not feel the difference when they flew the airplane. So I don't know what this one's going to start out at. We'll see what it's got for a vibration angle and uh, add weight, subtract weights. When we put the permanent weights on, fly combing, if they're lined up with a bolt hole position in the ring gear, you can add weights and put them in with the bolt. Um, the general preferred way to do it is to pull the spinner dome off, put a countersunk screw hole next to where we've got the weights, and then put the countersunk screw and then put the weights behind the backing plate. We don't normally put them through the wall of the backing plate unless the spinner is at least 40 thousandths thick. you got to get into fairly big airplanes before you get that. Most of these are about 032. Any questions yet? No? All right. Need to get everybody to stand back here behind me, behind the wingtip. And we'll get Jody to run it up. So the first thing he's going to do, he's going to fire, it's already warmed up, so we're good there. He's going to run it at 2,000 RPM. If you've got an analog tap, we can check the accuracy of the tack with this as well because it's going to give you an exact digital rating of the RPM right down to the 1. We'll do the trial balances at 2,000. We'll get it all tuned in with the weight where we want them. Then we'll get him to run it up to what his cruise RPM is, 2,400 RPM, and then we check the balance there. Sometimes we'll get them where they're rough at low end, but when you get it up into cruise RPM, they're dead not smooth, and that's kind of what you're looking for. So you don't care if taxiing or climbing out. You want it where you're going to be sitting in it for hours and hours. Dave, if it's for safety, is this a danger zone here in the plane of the weights? Yeah, I think you're okay there. As long as you stay back out here behind the wing tip, you're good. Okay. Guys, keep in mind, this is a fuel-injected engine, so when Don't there's a crowd... Don't make excuses.
excuses. Just there's a crowd. Look, come on, Jody. Jody, two blades or you're buying beer. <laughs> Seven. So we're going to put the permanent weights on it and then check it from there. Okay, so he's got his tack is showing 2000, the actual is 1990 RPM. So his tack is real close. I've seen some of them where we run them up and the tacks are 200 RPM out. The guys never realized it. With the constant speed props are especially critical. We had one guy had a Skyline and he kept saying his airplane will outperform all the other 182s on the airport. <laughs> We looked at it and it's like, well, yeah, you're turning 200 RPM over red line on climb out. <laughs> so we got 0.07 ifs. Anything below 0.2 is considered good. Anything below 0.1 is considered real good. So he's right in the good range. So Matt put the temporary weights on last year, but we never finished it. You come on out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the spinner dome off if the holes on the ring gear don't line up exactly. And we're going to transfer that with a digital scale to permanent weights. Put a countersunk screw through the lip on the backing plate. Put the weights behind it. So we haven't changed the azimuth angle, the weights, the diameter, the arm and moment of anything. So we're going to see what we've got for clearance if we've got room without a bolt head or anything hitting anything else in here. off like that and he's oh somebody's added some weight so I gotta be careful everything has got to go back in the same spot that it was. And very good to know. Okay so we've got different ways we can do this. We can go behind the bulkhead we're right here adjacent to this screw. We can come out, we're on the same basis for arm and moment, so our weights are going to be the same. So it's going to be real easy. We can put them right in the cheek plates. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. 
we've got at least one and a half threads showing. <coughs> takes it off, takes the spinner off for an annual. He sees this and he sees, okay, well, it's got balance weights on it. It's been messed with, so we got to be careful to put everything back the same way when it comes back together. The spinner's got to go back, can't be 180. Um, the permanent weights that we did, we just moved them inboard on the cheeks. So we got the same arm and moment. We haven't changed the radius, so the weight change is the same. The temporary screws that he had were a little bit longer, so that offset the difference in the weight of the screw. Hmm. So we should come in probably 0 0.05, 0 0.07, close to it. But now he can take the prop off, take the spinner off. As long as he indexes everything back the same way at an annual, then it's not going to have any effect on the balance. Usually about every four or five hundred hours we check these. Normally it's from people, you know, you nick something, a mechanic will dress something out of a tip. You do that after a few years and all of a sudden you don't realize how much metal you've actually taken away. This, with the weights that we put on here, that would have given it about a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ips when it was started. And now we're down at like a 0 0.07, way, way down in the vibration range. Jody said when he flew it with the temporary weights on it, you could really notice the difference. Now we put it all back together. Alright Jody, you can come back. We're going to go 2000 initially and just watch for hand signal. It's a running of luck when I'm going to go to your four. That's what I'm going to see. I remember that. Clear prop. Zero seven, and your tack at 2400 is actual 2437. Okay. Okay, we need the, uh, see, 638 Charlie. We need the tack time or hop, whatever you use. And that's tack or total? That is tack. Okay. number 638 Charlie. So that's the maintenance release. You can put that in the prop log book. It's just a peel back. You're all set.